otherwise known as Ravings and Cravings, here with you by the skin of my teeth tonight as I drove here from New Haven wondering if I'd make it on time. But I had to be here to see Brandon. So I'm here tonight with Brandon Smith, who is the sole owner of EB Coffee Roasting Company. And for those of you who can get the visual, I'm going to show you the bag because I got to try some of this yummy coffee. So we're going to show you this. Brandon, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. It is a pleasure here. Got it? We're good. Okay. So, Brandon, let's get right to it here. Tell us why EB and what in the world does that mean? Who did you name this after? Uh, so EB Coffee Roasting is named after my grandfather, uh, who we called Eb, um, also known as Earl Berry. Um, also known by us, us as Bapa. Oh, well, just hang on. That is just <laughs> too sweet. Thank you. Did you did you know him? Uh, yes, Personally, I did. He he, did. he, uh, he died a couple of years back, um, but okay. we were all very close with him. All right. um, so it's named after him. And, and one of the big reasons I wanted to name it after him is after coming up with many other ridiculous names um, was that one of the things I remembered about him is that he was always very family oriented. He loved spending mm -hmm. time with us. He always wanted to be around us um, and, you know, all of his other grandchildren, his, his kids. Um, and, and that spoke to me. And that's a lot about, you know, what I want my coffee company to be about is uh, people because coffee is just not a drink. Um, it's a social beverage. Mm -hmm. My uh, old boss and my mentor taught me that. Um, so so that, that spoke to me. You know, that, that, that could take up a good hour already because... <laughs> Absolutely. Because, uh, you know, you, I didn't even know this, and, and that really s strikes a nerve for me, uh, a very serious nerve, because I believe family is, is very important. And whenever I get to spend time with my family, like I celebrated Thanksgiving this past Saturday... Because my daughter won't be home for Thanksgiving. So, and I can still, do special things with her. Absolutely. Still make sure you have that time. And, and guess what we brewed that day? Some EB coffee. Yes, yes. Love to hear We it. did, we did. So <laughs> I hope everyone enjoyed. She's a, she's a coffee freak, and I think I am in some ways. I grew up drinking Armenian coffee. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. similar to Turkish coffee. I don't know okay, yep. Very familiar had. with it. No, I haven't had it uh, personally or professionally. Um on any level, but I've I've read about it and I've definitely uh, looked into it. It is called motor oil. Is, is what it is. <laughs> I would, from the way uh, the videos I've seen on it being brewed, I would imagine um, yep. it, it's very strong. Yeah. <laughs> so talk about you have a number of different kinds of brews and with your beans and stuff like that. Since we're talking about it, mm -hmm. so tell us about some of the kinds of things that you have to offer. Um, so what I mainly have right now are uh, light roasts. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there are, are many different ways of roasting coffee, uh, many different names for the roasts of coffee. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, with light roasts and why I'm focusing on that is because you get a lot more of the flavor that's actually in the coffee versus, like, when you go on the more darker side of things, you know, you have the French roast is you know, another word for yeah. dark roast. Um, mm -hmm. While some people prefer that, uh, and, you know, a good cup of coffee is the cup of coffee you enjoy, um, <laughs> That's a good way of know, defining it. Because <laughs> everybody has an opinion, right? Absolutely. At the end of the day, it's what you enjoy. <laughs> um, but uh, light roast has come into the field of coffee in the more recent years, um, I guess the more new wave of coffee. Hmm. Um, and it's, it's kind of the equivalent of wine. You know, you can taste wine and you can tell, you know, where it's from. You have sommeliers that can tell you, you know, mm -hmm. where wines were grown and just by tasting it. And right, when right. you have uh, light roasted coffee, you can do something very similar. You can, hmm. you know, get coffees from different countries and you can depict the different flavors and the nuances that they have. Mm -hmm. um, so not necessarily flavors, but maybe notes to pick up on, you know, like beer is the new thing, um, mm -hmm. you know, IPAs and, and tasting the different notes and flavors and that and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So coffee, it's kind of the same thing. And that's, um, uh, what we're focusing on mainly. Well, I have a hundred questions now after you said all that. <laughs> so you are focusing on light roasts. Is there a number of different light roasts that you have to offer? Like this one that you let me try was Colombian light. What mm. else do you have? So at the moment, um, I offer a Colombian light roast, mm -hmm. um, or all of them are in, in light roast. I can also, uh, online, I've uh, finally started my website, which has been really big. Um, <gasps> Tell us what is it. How do you, where is it? What is it? Uh, www. So ebcoffeeroasting.com. Okay. Um, no periods or anything. No spaces, okay. obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can go on there and you can choose, you know, what kind of roast you would like. Uh, oh. Mainly at the store, or I guess my storefront. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I also operate uh, my mom's diner in Chaplin, Connecticut. Julie, uh, also known as Blondie. Blondie. <laughs> um, and, and so I sell my coffee there. Those are all light roasts. But, again, mm -hmm. online you can go and pick what kind of roast you prefer. Um, 
And, uh, you know, you can get that order to your house, which is great. Or, again, come into the store. You can grab a bag of coffee. I also serve coffees there. Um, I have an espresso machine, so I do the lattes and all that fun stuff. At, and, uh, at Blondie? Yes. yes. So, you know, your other life, you are the chief cook and bottle washer at the Blondie's <laughs> Country Diner in Chaplin, right? Uh, yes, Blondie's Country Diner. On Route 6. So most of you out there probably have eaten there, and if you haven't, you should, because he's a great cook, too. And I, Thank you. I got to say, when I go in there, I never order what's on the menu, so you probably, <laughs> I don't know, you should probably kick me out. But My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to look at, what, at the menu and say, oh, I think, you know, I like a hot dog with hash browns on top for breakfast, or, you know, it just it's like ham and eggs or whatever. Anyway. So Brendan is there cooking, and this is an additional kind of... Yes, it's been a fantastic add-on uh, to the diner. I've been very thankful and, and blessed that I've had the opportunity to slowly start the coffee at business, mm -hmm. um, you know, where I've already kind of have a storefront and, and the opportunity to do it without having to, mm -hmm. you know, go all out and start my own thing. And um, I will say in the future, I plan on, on moving on to doing a coffee trailer, um, Oh, I've slowly nice. started to invest in all that, and that's, you know, every little, you know, uh, piece of equipment that I get is, you know, I'm planning to uh, put in there and, and establish, um, you know, an official, I guess, location for myself. So, like, in like a truck thing that you can haul around kind of Yes, thing. yes. Oh. So, I want to do, you know, I want to be able to find locations to um, be able to go back to repeatedly while also doing, you know, the fairs and festivals and all that fun mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe go to school events and do all that and uh, whatnot and you know, be able to do catering and everything. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm going to have coffee and small breakfast foods and stuff like that, handheld things. So nice. slowly creating a menu for all of that and, and doing some experimenting. As I do love to cook equally as much as I do love coffee. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and I will say, while I... Love coffee as a pastime, and it's one of my favorite hobbies ever. Um, it's also more important to continue to create the social aspect of it and keep that alive. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that's why I want to not just do online stuff and, and, you know, have subscriptions and have stuff delivered to people's doors. You know, I want to have a place that people can come and hang out, and I want to, you know, be able to create a sense of community, I guess. <laughs> I, I really think you've thought this out quite a bit. <laughs> do you stay up at night? thinking about all the time <laughs> what you want to do and what you want to establish and those kinds of things because i i feel like it, what you're saying is very thoughtful I, I definitely spend the majority of my time uh when i get to think just you know trying to figure out how i want to go about this mm -hmm. and and you know maybe not the best way um but the right way mm -hmm. uh, and and what's important to me about it and you know because it's never just about money um it's never just about the business mm -hmm. and you know the coffee it's it's always been more to me about that um and and the social experience is the main goal i always knew that i wanted that in my life and i found i guess i set myself a goal that mm -hmm. you know i wanted to in the future have be an integral integral part of a community and mm -hmm. to do that um you know i had to find i guess a way to dig myself in and find roots there. Mm -hmm. um, and when I got into coffee for the love of it, I also found that it was one of the greatest mediums between people. Mm -hmm. And and that's what spoke to me very loudly. Um, so that's that was kind of the goal. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, coffee equals relational thing, doesn't <laughs> it? It does. It's it does. a very relational thing. Although, you know, you can slug something down and, you know, and three o'clock in the afternoon when you feel like you need to pick me up you know grab some caffeine or whatever but i i like the idea of the slow down you know nurse the coffee enjoy it you know savor the moment and enjoy the company that you're with absolutely when i worked at uh j renee coffee roasters in, in west hartford um that's that's who i studied under and worked with very closely mm -hmm. um I got to work out on the bar um, and barista and everything and, and seeing the people that came. You know, we had our regulars that came in. They got their cup of coffee. We had a quick conversation, mm -hmm. which was great. We loved that. Mm -hmm. They loved that. And then they were gone. But then there were also the people that, you know, we'd stand and talk to for, you know, 10, 15 minutes or, you know, the people that would come together and they'd sit down and, you know, spend hours there just talking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was really nice to see that. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to be more of a part of that. Mm -hmm. So tell me. Is a light roast have more or less caffeine than a dark roast? That is a very good question. Um, 
It depends. <laughs> well, that's a bad answer. I hate that. No, anyway, tell me why it depends. So there's a reason, right? Um, no, it does essentially have uh, hold more caffeine uh, than than dark roasts do. Yeah. As you as you continue to roast the coffee, you know you you end up burning out some of the chemicals and and whatnot that's and stuff why. that's in there. Um, and caffeine being one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so it also depends because if you weigh coffee by the uh, scoop, mm-hmm. rather, like its mass versus like the actual weight of it, mm-hmm. you will end up with more, if you use a dark roast, you'll end up with more of the dark roast. Um, I'm sorry, I got that backwards, actually. If you, if you yeah. measure it by weight, okay. uh, you end mm-hmm. up with more of the dark roast in your coffee uh, mm-hmm. than when you were with a light roast because the dark roast weighs less. Uh, so therefore, oh. it's going to give you, well, I, I guess, more that. of a caffeine content anyways. So it ends up oh. evening out uh, pretty similarly. Um, but if you were to take a grain or a bean of each, uh, mm-hmm. it essentially does have more uh, caffeine, the lighter mm-hmm. roast. The lighter roast. Yes. See, like, okay. <laughs> it's always, it's always uh, deceivingly complex, as my boss would put it, which right. I loved. Well, if I water it down, <laughs> if, if you all out there want the most caffeine for your buck you want to go for the light roast go for the lighter roast. go for the light okay go for the light got it <laughs> also you can always brew your coffee you know at a stronger ratio depending on how you like it if you can handle that you know that'll put more caffeine in your cup that's why um espresso has so much caffeine in it uh, per ounce because it's a very higher concentrate of mm-hmm. the coffee where can we buy your beans these days then so aside from the website eb coffee roasting uh mm-hmm. they're at blondie's diner uh, right when you walk in, there's a nice display of the beans there, which we are working to uh, make a little bit better, uh, slowly but surely. Mm-hmm. I put the espresso bar out there recently. I got a nice little beverage cart, uh, put the machine out there so everyone can kind of see the, the drinks being made and whatnot. So is that both locations? Both, both Not blend? in Willimantic. Oh, the blends, uh, I'm sorry, the blends will be in Willimantic soon. Uh, also working on that, but mm-hmm. at the moment only at Chaplin. Okay, and what's the address of the Chaplin it's Blondie's Country Diner. Yes. So in Chaplin, what is the address there so people know where to go? Uh, that's 250 Willimantic Road in uh, Chaplin, Connecticut. It's mm-hmm. the old Pine Acres. Okay. So if I if I want to get a couple pounds, can I call ahead and say, can you put some aside for me or something like that? Can you do that? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And do you have gift certificates yet or are we still too early in the game? Because, you know, Christmas is coming and if any of you like me out there, you could, you know... <laughs> no, it's just all right, I'm inferring. All right, absolutely. I'm just teasing. So, uh, do you do anything like that right now? Uh, gift cards are not in the game yet, um, but that's not a bad idea. I will definitely take that into consideration, which I have not. Um, well, just someone could just buy a pound too, and absolutely, yeah. Come in, you know. I want to do. Uh, I guess the main focus for the holidays coming up is doing little gift baskets. I have uh, small bags coming in mm-hmm. that I can put, you know, samples of the different kinds of coffee that I have. So you know, you can get them, and try them out, and and figure out what you like the best. And, Oh my gosh! You know what? This I I I I visited a local restaurant, and they were telling me all these things that they do. And I said, you know, if beer has a flight, <laughs> why can't coffee? Uh, yes, I I agree. I actually have been to a coffee shop that did a flight of mm. uh, espressos, which I thought was interesting, um, but also fantastic because I was like, I'm I'm in. Uh, and, I would and, and I would so do that. I was like <laughs> for for a tasting or whatever, just to try different things i mean just so you said if you if i go to your website i can order something like specifically of whatever kind of roast i want there and but would it be like would that be like my personal favorite or is it something that you already have on hand do you mix the beans specifically for whoever's asking or how do you do that how do you do it great question so on the website, um, when you go to where the products are, mm-hmm. uh, you'll see a list of all the beans that I have, um, and then I do have. They're all they're all single origin, so I keep them all separate. So you know, I have Colombia, I have Brazil, um, I have um, sorry Guatemalan, and I have um, Nicaragua coffee. Mm, okay. So so I have those all separate single origin coffees, mm-hmm. and then I also have one blend. Mm-hmm. Um, that I'm mixing, which is Colombian, Brazilian, and uh, the Nicaragua. Ooh, that's nice. Um, so you can choose between those, and then after you know you choose which one you'd like to try, you can choose what kind of roast you would like to have it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have light, medium, and dark are the three options I that see. I'm giving. Okay. Um, which always prefer the light, but again, whatever you like the best, 
go for. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get to choose if you'd like it whole beans, so then you can grind them at home, which is always recommended. Um, keeps the beans fresher. And uh, if not, then you can get them ground, mm -hmm. uh, which you can also then select your option of how you would like them ground because that depends on um, how you brew your beans. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if you do like a drip coffee, then you just pick the drip option. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're uh, a French press kind of person. That's a different kind of different, grind. Different grain. So yep. more coarse. Yep. So, you know, I, I would grind it specifically to how you brew it. Um, and the main options are, are available and mm -hmm. um, present themselves as you go through the process of purchasing it. All right. So... You brew this at the Chaplin Blondie's Country Diner for the specialty coffees, right? Yes. So, yes. And what are some of the specialty coffees that you sometimes have? So, like, if you guys out there, if you want to try this coffee, I would say just go into the diner and, you know, try a couple of different kinds, right? Absolutely. It's not as quick as a drive through um, but, you know, we, uh, you can come in, you can get a coffee to go, and I have, you know, everything from espresso to latte, and essentially how that works is, um, you know, all those names mean different things at different places, but mm -hmm. I offer a traditional espresso menu, um, which I guess in order is espresso, macchiato, um, cortado, cappuccino, latte. Mm -hmm. You've got other things like flat white, and then you've got, you mm -hmm. know, flavored options and whatnot. Um, and how that works is the ratio between espresso and milk. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you like it not to be as strong and a bitter maybe, then you would get something mm -hmm. like a latte. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, if you like it stronger, you can get like a cortado or a macchiato. Right, right. Or, you know, if you're hardcore, just get an espresso. Mm -hmm. I have one every morning myself. Ah, um, there we go. <laughs> is that how you, yeah, that's, that sounds awesome. That's uh that's a good way to get the day started, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's uh, always got to start the day with a good espresso. So what's it, so that it, so apparently like espresso is it just straight? There's nothing in it. It's just yep. Hardcore. So it's it's um, equal parts uh, coffee and water. So if I use I'm sorry, it's a one to two ratio. So if I use 18 grams of coffee, then I'm getting uh, 36 grams out of liquid coffee okay. um, that you just drink straight up. Oh, that's serious, you know? right? Or you can do what's called the Americano, <laughs> which you just add water to, which I always find funny. And I don't know how it was really created, but I imagine it was if you go to Europe and you ask for a coffee, um, you get an espresso. And I'm sure an American went over there and asked for a coffee, and they got an espresso, and that was very strong, strong. And they poured some water in it and said, there's your... <laughs> coffee <laughs> no no please don't do that don't do that. <laughs> don't do that i think if i remember correctly when i was looking at the menu at the restaurant i think there weren't there some flavor added things too to some of the coffees yes i do have some flavors um some of the classic ones you would find you know your mocha chocolate um caramel uh vanilla cinnamon mm -hmm. um one of my favorites is uh cinnamon and vanilla uh, mixed together. Really? Oh, I have to That's try that next one. time I come. All also right. known as, I've seen it, uh, called a Spanish latte. Um, oh, okay. So I have those. I also am doing some other ones. I'm creating my own uh, flavors using, like, cardamom and, and star anise and all that stuff. So I have, like, a chai be, spice and things like nice. that. So brown sugar, maple, all those things. I so. like the horchata flavor, too. Okay, kind I don't think a... I've tried that. I've heard of that. I don't think I've tried it, though. If you go to any of the, well, many of like even Gallo's restaurant, they okay. have a horchata cold drink. And I think it's made from rice, sugar, and some other. Anyway, you could try it cold. I'll have to try that. But that would be lovely in a coffee. I would definitely suck that down, no problem. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the coffee that I tried. So this, you can hear, it is a whole bean coffee because I grind and brew. Love to hear it. Yes, I'm a grind and brew person. Although... And, and I like my grind very fine. Mm -hmm. And I usually, like, one cup of coffee in a coffee maker, I think, is it six ounces of water, I think? Is one cup six ounces? Um, depends. Like, the actual, yeah, like, yeah. so, like, my coffee maker says on the side of it, like, one cup is five ounces, you know, an actual right. cup is Variable. eight ounces. I don't even know, to be honest with For, you. I should. But yeah, <laughs> I know, I should. I think one cup is eight ounces, um, and... and I could be wrong, but again, it's like all the machines say different yeah, things and whatnot, yeah. and it all just really depends. Well, whatever my one cup is, I put in two scoops of beans because mm -hmm. I like it stronger. Okay. I like stronger coffee. So you do it, yeah, by volume instead of weight, which yep. is what most people I would mm -hmm, say do. And mm -hmm. Yeah, you just get the uh, little scooper out and yeah, yeah. figure out, you know, after a couple of times, you're like, all right, a little more water, a little more coffee or something, and then. And I mean, I've had people come to my house and have my coffee and say, 
could I have some hot water in there? Because that's, <laughs> that's kind of strong. But no problem. So I did try the Colombian light roast. And so I wrote my comments on the back of the bag, for those of you who can see this. And I said that it had a light flavor. And it was actually, it's not a bad thing. Because I don't think bitter is bad. But I, I felt like it had a, a slight bitter kind of taste when it's black. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I, I will try the coffee black first. Nothing, because I want to have the full yeah. experience. And then I'll play with it and throw stuff in there. So when I add my creamer, because I don't like flavored coffees, like I will never buy blueberry coffee beans. Mm -hmm. Just please don't do that. <laughs> I've gotten some requests. It's been a debate. No, um, no. And <laughs> all right, trying to stay away from it. Uh, all right, all right. So it's just it's personal preference, because like you said at the beginning, any coffee that you think is a good coffee is a good coffee, right? Exactly. Because it's subjective, right? So I would rather get a good flavor creamer added to it and have a good, solid, regular cup of coffee first. But after after I add the the flavor, and the creamer flavor is, a, is called speculoos, okay. which is a, a combination of seasonings like Spices, I should say, like cinnamon, white pepper, cardamom, oh, nice. ginger. It has all those spices in it. In I'll the try creamer. to make that myself. <laughs> you have to have that at that big store in North Windham. I shouldn't say what it is, but they have it in there. I did not know that. Yeah, no. it's speculoos. And I put that in the coffee. And then I was like, this was like gourmet coffee shop flavor. Took it to just another level. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It was it was great. And it was very easy. No, Matt, I don't want to see two two fingers, okay? <laughs> I don't want to know that there's only two minutes left. We just got started. And you know that... I know, I'm just getting... We're I just know. getting started. That, and that, that <laughs> song night. that song before us ran long. I You owe me some time. <laughs> All right, I shouldn't say that. We got like an extra half hour because of that. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> okay, Brandon, your chance. Just tell people what you want them to know about EB Coffee and, and its availability at Blondie's Country Diner. You can go ahead and finish the program and then I'll sign off. Thank you so much. Um, I mean, I'm very thankful for the time that I've gotten to uh, speak, and I, I think I've said more than I could have ever hoped to. Um, but again, you know, it's just coffee is deceivingly complex, mm. and you know, while I could go on and on and on about you know the science behind it and the right way to brew it, um, you know, again, scientifically mm. and whatnot, you know, it's just what you enjoy at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and um, you know, hopefully we can offer that, and I hope that. You know, being a local business, that that mm -hmm. speaks to people. Um, you know, I try to keep things simple. Um, you know, I try to keep it healthy. Um, mm -hmm. And and I, as much as I love Blondie's Country Diner, I'm very excited to be able to start my own adventure uh, in the coffee business. And you know, I, I hope that one day, through what I'm starting here at the diner, mm -hmm. I can open my own business and be able to do that and create my own um, community and environment and and just a place for people to be able to come and, and hang out. Gosh, think I mean like I could just eat like party f favors at a <laughs> wedding, like little pouches of coffee, and I mean there's so much potential for. There's so many things that could be done, and so it's, it's hard stuff. to choose, you know, um, what to put focus on and, and what to do first, and and um, but just slowly figuring it out day by day, and uh, um, you know, little steps at a time. Yeah, honestly, I think you're I think you're wise because you want to what you do, you want to do well. Absolutely, that's that's. That's the key. And it's hard to, you know, be your own worst critic and, and yeah. you know, try to put something out that you just want to be perfect. And it's never going to be perfect, but all you mm -hmm. can do is, is um, you know, try your best and, and just, you know, put the time and effort yep. into it and yep. hope for the best. And you just keep thinking about your family and the, and who you're representing. And, and then that, that's probably enough caffeine to keep you going on that, <laughs> right? Absolutely. That'll always keep, you know, my head straight and, and give me a place to look at. Okay, do I have any time left or am I done? No. Like 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Well, this is Ruth Hartunian Allenbaugh, along with Brandon Smith, who's owner of EB Coffee Roasters. Yes. Right? Signing off, ravings and cravings. I hope to see you guys next Monday, or you can listen in on Good Company WILI.